Hey, welcome back to Album April. It's April 4th, and today I listened to The Wall by Pink Floyd. This 1979 album might be the most famous concept album of all time. Not only did it sell big numbers, not like Dark Side of the Moon big numbers, but still big numbers, it was even adapted into a film. And it's also one of those works that didn't get glowing reception at the time of its release, but retrospectively has been given a lot of praise. My first impression and overall impression of The Wall kind of has to do with what this album is even about. Because it's not just an album, it's supposed to be telling a story. However, it never, like, directly tells a story. It doesn't, like, give you the characters or the setting or the plot or anything really like that. This is more, like, symbolic and abstract throughout the whole thing. I'm sure that the original release had album notes that would give you more details, and the film probably helped a lot too, but for the most part, if you just look at the music on its own, much of it is up to interpretation. So I'm going to talk about two different interpretations of the story being told in The Wall. The first was my interpretation, and the second is the quote-unquote official interpretation as explained by, you know, the album makers and the movie. This album starts out by creating a little bit of context of a life where the main character always feels like there's something holding him back, stopping him from moving forward in the world. Like he wants to progress, but there is a wall blocking him. The wall preventing him from escaping is being built by all sorts of people, by the school system, by his own parents, by society around him, and eventually even by himself. Over time, he falls into this learned helplessness, and eventually he just starts lashing out. These actions cause him to get in trouble, and the punishment is the wall being broken down. And now that he's free, he feels just as confused and alone outside the wall as he did inside of it. One of the running themes I kept getting was the idea of depersonalization, the idea that you're not even in control of your own life. And I think one of the most powerful emotional moments in the album comes from the track Stop, where he basically is thinking like, was I never supposed to be happy? Did I deserve this this entire time? So that was my interpretation of the music from The Wall, but apparently the real story is a lot more um, colorful. It's about a rock star who had a very unhappy childhood, and he, as he grows up, he forms this wall around himself. As his fame increases, he caves more and more into the temptations of sex, drugs, rock and roll, until eventually he completely shuts himself off, and it leads to him having a breakdown on stage. Then he's punished by having his wall destroyed, and there's this weird sort of cyclical nature of the album, as the end of the album is a sentence that cuts off in the middle, and the album began with that sentence ending. The Wall has been criticized for being overblown and pretentious, and I mean, I'm not going to say those are completely unfair assessments of the album, but it's not nearly as much so as I was expecting. I was almost prepared for this masturbatory self-insert fantasy where this rock star is this rebel fighting against an unjust and cruel system, but it's a little bit more personal than that. Though there were absolutely moments in this album that made me roll my eyes. Out of all the songs from The Wall, my favorite was Comfortably Numb. This sort of falls in the point of the story I interpreted of the learned helplessness, that sort of unhappy complacency. There's some really good instrumentation in Comfortably Numb, and it follows this arc where it starts out seeming like kind of this grand statement, but then it sort of devolves into almost like this cry of pain, but it's all kept under the surface. Comfortably Numb can kind of be described as internal screaming the song. I also feel compelled to bring up the most successful single from this album, probably the most famous song from this album, and the most successful single Pink Floyd ever put out, Another Brick in the Wall Part 2. There was a Part 1 and 3, but you don't really need those for context if you're just listening to Part 2. This is a song that shows like a very dystopian view of the educational system where kids are like prisoners being brainwashed to be made into cogs in the machine. I did know about this song before going into the album, which might have been part of the reason why I was expecting the entire album to be a lot more like that. It does have a pretty funky groove, but it also kind of devolves into camp on a few occasions. 
However, there is something in this song that relates to something that I will praise the entire album for. Something that I think makes it really work as a concept album is its use of leitmotif. The main melody in Another Brick in the Wall, that sort of droning, imposing, anthemic sort of melody, does come up a couple times later on in the album. And what's interesting is that that leitmotif comes up at two big turning points in the album. The first is the beginning of disc two, which is Hey You, which is sort of the beginning of his descent into madness. And the other one is Waiting for the Worms, which is sort of like the climax of where his breakdown is completely taken full force. It was a really good use of leitmotif to sort of create some dramatic buildup and payoff. I have said a lot of uh, positive things about this album, but there were a couple parts of it that I didn't really like at all. I'd say that my least favorite song on the entire album was the penultimate song, The Trial, because it is just goofy. In fact, I would say it subtracts a lot from the entire album experience as a whole because it's supposed to be the climax of the story, and I can't take it even remotely seriously. There were also a couple strange bizarre choices throughout the album in another brick in the wall part two there was a lot of voice clips of people yelling and pretending to be these evil oppressive teachers and there was this one song for minutes on end there was just somebody breathing directly into my right ear so bottom line do i think that the wall holds up i would say overall Yes, I think it's a lot better as like an experience album where the um, lines between different songs are a lot more blurry. I would say it's a better example of that than Dark Side of the Moon. And while the prose that this story is being told in can be a little overblown at times, some of the themes in this album still ring very true today. Comfortably Numb, I think, fits in very well with modern society. It kind of made me think of Numb Little Bug. Overall, I would say that The Wall is a highly ambitious, flawed, but still overall good art piece. Okay, I'll see you tomorrow.